The United Nations top official met with Russia's foreign minister today in Moscow, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, acknowledging that they had different interpretations of what's actually happening in Ukraine, but the UN is committed to creating conditions for a peaceful solution. Guterres is also set to speak with Russian President Putin later today. He'll then head for Kyiv for discussions with Ukrainian President Zelensky on Thursday. And for the latest on the situation in Ukraine, I'm joined live uh, by CTV's Omar Sachedina in Kyiv. Uh, Omar, we're seeing a lot of shuttle diplomacy happening. The United Nations, our foreign minister uh, with uh, Antony Blinken today. Uh, any tangible results from these things? Well, that really depends on your perspective, George. I can tell you that if you observe the language that the UN Secretary General uh, Antonio Guterres used today, it, it shows and it's clear the challenge that he faces in making his pitch to Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister. He's basically calling for an immediate ceasefire here in Ukraine and a, effectively a cessation of hostilities. But you've got to remember that Russia is a member of the P5, the Permanent Five, and the UN Security Council. So his challenge with this meeting that he has or had with with uh, Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister, and will have with the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, today, is to be able to convince them somehow to try to back off uh, while at the same time holding them accountable for uh, their atrocities. And it is uh, no easy task. You mentioned that after those meetings in Moscow, he will be making here his way later in the week to meet with the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky. He has faced some criticism from the Ukrainian president, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, he, the pr Ukrainian president has basically asked Antonio Guterres why he visited Moscow first and then is coming to Kyiv afterwards. So uh, whether that factors into the tone or tenor of the discussions on Thursday, we'll have to see. But, you know, the demand or the, the plea for the ceasefire is coming at a time when Russia is only intensifying its attacks, George, on this country. Mm -hmm. We heard about new uh, attacks on the city of Kharkiv, which is Ukraine's second largest city. We also know, based on what the British Defense Ministry is saying, that the uh, city of Kremina in the Luhansk uh, uh, region in the Donbass in the east uh, has also been overtaken uh, by the Russians now. So certainly those attacks are being stepped up. They're being intensified. And this comes a day after those five attacks on the railway and fuel uh, targets, which was extremely significant because it takes away those attacks from uh, the eastern part of the country where that new offensive by the Russians is and pushes it in the West. Can I just briefly, before I let you go, uh, Omar, ask you about uh, the extraction plans, the progress here? Mayor Upol, there are also reports unconfirmed that, uh, you know, people there were being forced to dig mass graves in exchange for food. Just, you know, more terrible stories. Very terrible stories. And George, you know, Mario Pol has become the, the, the epicenter, you could say of the civilian suffering in this country. It is an absolute disaster what is happening there. A lot of focus has been on that steel plant, the Azovstal uh, steel plant. There was some talk of a humanitarian corridor being established. This is what the Russians had put forward uh, yesterday. But the two sides, the Russians and the Ukrainians, could not agree to the terms. At least from the Ukrainian perspective, there is still an issue of, of safety and an added concern that the civilians, the thousand civilians who are at that plant, will be forced to go to, to Russia instead of other safer regions of Ukraine. So uh, that has not uh, basically happened, that humanitarian corridor. Uh, those uh, thousand civilians remain there. As for the 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers, there's no plan for them so far. They're defiantly holding on to that last stronghold at that steel plant, where tens of thousands of um, residents in Mariupol also are trapped. Two months plus and the war drags on. Uh, Omar Sachadina, CTV News, live for us in Kiev, Ukraine. Omar, thank you.